Member statements. Member statements. I recognize the member for Stormont Dundas South Glengarry. Thank you, Speaker. It is with a heavy heart that I rise today in this House to pay tribute to David Murphy of Cornwall. Our community is mourning with the news on Sunday of his passing at the age of 50 from lung cancer. He was a non-smoker. Speaker, 90 seconds will not begin to even explain the impact Dave has had in our region. He was a great community leader, a coach to many youth, a fundraiser for too many causes to name, a friend, and a former municipal councillor. David was a proud, lifelong Cornwall resident who dedicated his life to its betterment. David's involvement in leadership in countless fundraising initiatives, not-for-profit organizations, and local service clubs is the definition of a true community leader. After making public that he had lung cancer, Dave started Team Murphy with the mission of raising funds to help others with the cost of travel to Ottawa for treatment. In a short time, he raised tens of thousands of dollars for others. Such a selfless endeavor during the ultimate fight for his life. In the last month, David was, has been inducted into the Cornwall Sports Hall of Fame, as well as awarded the Cornwall and Ch Area Chamber of Commerce President's Award, the Children's Treatment Centre of Cornwall President's Award, and the Queen's Platinum Jubilee Medallion. David will be missed by our entire community, and we extend our sincere condolences to his daughter and favourite human, Julia, his friends and family. Thank you. I recognize the member for Algoma, Manitoulin. Thank you, Speaker. On Saturday, Whitefish River First Nation will be recognizing Ogima Shining Turtle for more than 20 years of service as an elected chief for the community. The Ogima is stepping down from this role to pursue other opportunities, and I know that I personally will still be looking for him for guidance and insight. Being a leader is no easy task, Speaker. Being an Ogima is significantly more challenging because of the systematic barriers that stand in your way. Therefore, to serve that role for over two decades shows the leadership qualities that he embodies. Ogima Shining Turtle has been known by premiers, prime ministers, ministers, and leaders across the country as a steadfast advocate for his community, the Anishinaabek Nation, and the rights of Indigenous people across Turtle Island. During his time in office, Ogima oversaw the renovation to the community centre and the updating of the water system to ensure reliable, safe drinking water in Whitefish River First Nation. He helped bring new life to Rainbow Lodge and stood up for his community during the COVID-19 pandemic to ensure the safety of children and elders. He has stood up for the treaty rights of his community by asserting their rights to hunt, fish and trap and they're on their traditional territory and playing a major role in the Robinson Huron Treaty annuities case. You never say goodbye as it brings an end. So I say to my friend, Bamapi, until our paths cross again. Member statements. I recognize the member for Ajax. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I rise today to say it's an honor to represent my, the constituents of Ajax and I will continue to be an advocate for them. I had the privilege of volunteering at the Homebound Wellness Center. Uh, the Homebound Wellness Center is a not-for-profit organization located in Ajax, servicing the needs of seniors of Durham. They offer a large range of services for seniors, including mobile day programs, respite care, foot care, clinic support groups, and the hot meal program, as well as delivered groceries to seniors during COVID. Their mission statement is to establish, operate, and maintain social, recreational, and health-related programs and activities for seniors in the community. After two years of pandemic, organizations like these are integral to improve the wellness and independence of seniors who are lonely and isolated and individuals working with various trauma and post-mortem depression. One of their favorite programs for me to volunteer is a Thursday night seniors dinner. It is really an amazing experience being able to serve the various seniors that attend this program. It's an array of cultures, languages, and lived experiences, great conversations, and amazing stories. Sarita Miller, the program director, is purposefully creating and serving amazing meals accompanied by music, singing, and interactions. The seniors work on a project, usually a craft to take home. The last one gifted to me was a thankful pumpkin for my door. These are an amazing time, and I thank that organization for all they do for seniors. Member statements. I recognize the member for Ottawa West, Nakia. Thank you, Speaker. 
Winter is upon us, and while this time of year is often celebrated and welcomed as a time for holiday get-togethers, hot chocolate, and outdoor winter activities, it is also a time of extreme hardship for our neighbours that are experiencing poverty and homelessness. As the temperature drops, it is important to note how this will affect the most vulnerable among us and to take meaningful action to address the systemic causes of poverty and homelessness. My office has received calls from concerned constituents who have noticed an increase in people sleeping rough and in new encampments. As we head into the bitter winter months, they worry about access to housing and supports, and they worry about how government policies like low social assistance rates and lack of rent control are making people homeless. In addition to being worried about their unhoused neighbours, many people who contact my office are worried about winding up on the street themselves. Kevin, who lives in a property owned by a large corporate landlord, has told us that his landlord is already distributing notices informing all of their tenants across all their properties to expect their rent to increase by at least the maximum amount set by the province. The landlord has also warned tenants that they will be seeking above guideline increases wherever possible. At a time of record-breaking inflation, low social assistance rates, and a stagnant minimum wage, it is concerning to see corporate landlords attempting to rake in more profits, putting their tenants at risk of eviction. This holiday season, we need to remember to support those in our community who are experiencing poverty. That means doubling social assistance rates, raising minimum wage, enacting real rent control, and building genuinely affordable housing instead of boosting developer profits to build homes no one can afford. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Richmond Hill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. On the 19th of August, 1942, there were nine young men from Richmond Hill who landed at the Blue Beach, Dieppe, France. It is part of Operations Jubilee. Eight of them did not return alive. It was the largest, the biggest single day of loss for Richmond Hill. The heroes who sacrificed their life in exchange for our freedom are Private George Charles Adams, Private Thomas Miller Armstrong, Private William John Findlay, Lance Corporal Joseph Albert Glover, Private Ernest Albert Gould, Private Charles Hill, Private Roy Alexander Walker, Private Russell Thomas Weiss, Private Adams' older brother, Sergeant William John Adams, who was also involved in the raid. He was captured and spent the rest of the war as a prisoner. However, upon returning to Canada, he still continued to serve at the York Regional Police. Mr. Speaker, we should remember and pay respect to them, not only on Remembrance Day, but every day. But also, we should remember the family members who also sacrificed along with them. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Next, the member for Sudbury. Thank you very much, Speaker. Speaker, this year marks my UE and USW Local 6500's 60th anniversary. I often credit the training, support, and opportunities that I had as a steelworker with my success as a parliamentarian. In fact, during my inaugural speech in 2018, I said, this world is thirsty for leadership, and my union gave me the training and opportunities to become a leader. They celebrated me when I was successful, and they supported me when I was struggling. I would not be here today if it weren't for the steelworkers. I wouldn't be in this house, I wouldn't be in this chair, in the position I have with my family. As well, Speaker, I often say steelworkers make great leaders. That's not only a reflection of Local 6500's ongoing commitment to the community, but to the fact that my local, Local 6500, has produced three District 6 directors, a Canadian national director, and an international president. And closer to home, 6500 has always taken the leadership role. Our UE members sit on boards and they help raise funds for local charities. We develop excellent stewards, commitment, and effective OSHA safety, health, and environment reps. Because of Local 6500, Sudbury no longer looks like a moonscape. Our members perform safety investigations and coroner's inquests. We negotiate fair contracts and represent our members at grievances and arbitrations. The list goes on and on, from children's Christmas parties to membership support with mental health and addictions to retiree support with WSIB. For the past 60 years, USW Local 6500 has been a shining example of the iconic phrase, the union makes us strong. Happy anniversary to Local 6500. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Mississauga Mountain. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We make a living by what we do, 
and we make a life by what we give. Recently, I was touched by the words of Order of Canada recipient Dr. Lucky Lakshman when he said, life is art of giving. While many people have more than what they need, some don't even have enough to fulfill their need. I'm always inspired by the volunteer-based organizations and programs such as Fueling Healthy Mind that believes in giving and uplifting the community. In Region of Peel, more than 20% of the children come to school with empty stomach. In 2020, when schools were closed because of COVID-19, lots of these students were, who were using the school breakfast program were left with need. In direct response to the need, my wife Aruna Anand led a 100% volunteer-based breakfast program and served over 225,000 nutrition meals with the support of Saidham Food Bank, YMC of GTA, school staff, and many selfless volunteers. Every Friday, through Feeling Healthy Mind, I witnessed art of giving the, being the most important ingredient to make our community a better place to live for everyone. To, I urge all Canadian and as a first generation immigrant, especially to the new Canadians who are working hard to gain a sense of belongingness, to indulge in giving back to the community. Give time, give love, give respect, and give your resources. Together, we, let's all participate in the art of giving. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. <laughs> member Statements, the member for Kingston and the Islands. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to address the Conservatives' proposed updates to the Ontario Wetland Evaluation System. Their changes encourage skipping over what you don't know when it comes to developing wetlands. In my science and business career, the following idea has served me well. If you're unsure about something, go ask people who know more than you do. But look at just what some of the uh, Conservatives are just look at some of what the Conservatives are doing in their headlong rush to develop land. Quote, if there is uncertainty about wetland delineation, evaluators are encouraged to consult with MNR. This is deleted. In other words, in typical Conservative government fashion, don't check with the scientists. They may know something you don't like. Quote, and if, if an evaluator is uncertain how to proceed with or interpret any component of this evaluation system, they should contact the appropriate MNR district office. This is cut. In other words, if you're not sure, don't bother checking with the MNR biologist or ecologist and all the expertise they have access to. To add insult to industry, to add insult to injury, there is uh, this quote: "A wetland that is already being evaluated may be re-evaluated," which means now that MNR scientists are out of the way, somebody can go back, hire another evaluator, and try to open up a wetland for development. Mr. Speaker, the Conservatives are afraid of any informed balance between environmental protection and economic development. Member Statements. The member for Scarborough Agent Court. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Every year on October 28, Greeks all over the world celebrate Ochi Day, No Day. It is the day the Greek people and the Greek Prime Minister Ioannis Metaxas rejected the ultimatum made by Benito Mussolini in the 1940s, hence refusing to be subjugated to the tyranny of fascism and defended their freedom and democracy. Ochi Day has a special place in modern Greek history. In addition to being the cradle of democracy, it is the destiny of the Greek people throughout the ages to be the vanguards of the ideas and the principles ancient Greeks gave to humanity. That legacy has continued for the last 5,000 years and has left its indisputable impact on our way of life. I had the honor of participating in the gala dinner on October 29 and the October 30th parade on the Danforth Avenue. I would like to congratulate the Greek Community Center of Toronto, the participating GTHA Greek organizations, and thousands of volunteers and audience for keeping the memory and flame of Ohi alive and passing it to the next generation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Brampton West. 
Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Speaker. On the weekend, I had the opportunity to attend Celebrate Life with Lights, an event organized by Namneet Sharma, a cancer survivor and the founder of Cancer Warrior Canada Foundation for their fifth annual Cancer Awareness and Fundraiser Gala. Mr. Speaker, Cancer Warrior is a group of inspired individuals that create awareness about breast cancer, early diagnosis, and treatment options. Mr. Speaker, they not only work hard to raise money for research, they also help to support patients, survivors, and their families as they go through this journey. Every year, thousands of women are diagnosed with breast cancer. Our mothers, our grandmothers, our sisters, and friends. Our diagnosis can be devastating, Mr. Speaker, not only physically, but emotionally and financially. So I want to commend all the great work Namneet Sharma and their amazing team at Cancer Warrior Canada Foundation is doing and for their dedication in raising awareness about breast cancer, early diagnosis, and treatment options. Mr. Speaker, events like these help fight the stigma that breast cancer has and you, they end the breast a stigma that breast cancer has. They're the true community heroes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. That concludes our member statements for this morning. I beg to